So like I said, get out, ride your bikes, go to Mexico if you live in Southern California, Arizona, New Mexico, Texas, wherever you live. If you live close enough to ride over to Mexico, make that trip. Man, this was a crazy weekend, right? So, me and a buddy, we go down to Mexico. We're going down because, uh, you know, one of the motorcycle organizations down there uh, put up a plaque and we got represented in this plaque as being a recognized motorcycle, this would be motorcycle club in Baja, California. And so we were going down to check the plaque out down in Ensenada. But uh, unfortunately, we never made it to the plaque because there was all kinds of craziness happening down there. But, uh, you know, that's, uh, I guess we'll get to see it another time. So we get down there, we're on our way. And usually we go to Mexico, it's in and out. I got stopped once before, it's in one of the videos. Uh, I'll put the link to that video up here and I got stopped. I got pulled to the side and I just, you know, I told the people there, the, the, their agents, the Mexican agents, I just told them I don't speak Spanish. So they waved me on after they, they stopped me. They discussed it for a minute and they just let me go. This time, dude looked at me, <laughs> looked at my, my brother who was with me and pulled us over to the screening area. Man, they had me get out the car. They searched around my spot in the car. They searched the, the trunk, everything in the car. You know, I imagine they were looking for guns. There'd be no reason for us to be taking drugs into Mexico. So they're probably searching for weapons. And, uh, you know, they detained us there for a little bit. And then they let us go on our way. So <coughs> we go, it's like, cool, cool, you know, no big deal. And we go on, we're staying in the playas, playas de Tijuana. And uh, man, we get a nice hotel down there. If you guys go down there, the hotel I think is called Jatay, J-A-T-A-Y. Man, that's a really nice modern hotel. Rooms are a little on the small side, but really nice. Anyway, so we go, we get our room, we put our stuff in the room. And then we walk out because the beach is right across the street. We walk out, there's a 7-Eleven right there. We run over to the 7-Eleven, grab a, a couple cervezas and uh, head on over to the beach. So the way the, the beach is, the beach is down below and you're kind of like on a hill. And there's some seating areas up above the beach. So we were in the seating area where, you know, people have, had beers before and you know it was no issue so we were sitting there we were just drinking a beer we each had a beer and then we just kick him back and uh all of a sudden here come the cops and the cops come over and they start telling us oh you can't drink here you know all this kind of stuff and uh so we're like cool cool well, okay we're done we thought we could drink here and they're like no you can't drink here you can drink on the beach so we we're like cool cool so we had already pretty much finished our beer anyway so we're just kicking back but then you know the first group of cops walked away and another group walks up and then they kind of like just hover over us like just hovering over us like you know what's up you know and uh you know we sat there for a bit and then it was like let's go so we left left up out there went back to the room kicked it in the room You know, and, and in the States, you know, we'd have started mouthing off, like, why are you harassing us? What's the problem, you know? But I don't I don't get mouthy with anybody and I'm in, I'm in a foreign country. I don't, uh, and I don't mess around <laughs> with, with that kind of thing somewhere else, you know? 
So we just went back to the room and kicked it. Next day we wake up, go meet up with another brother, go get some, uh, some breakfast, hang out, it's all good, no problems. The brother that we met up with, we were gonna go drop his car so we can make a run to Ensenada. So we drop his car off at a lot and uh, we're waiting. Uh, well, actually, no, take that back. We drop his car off the lot. Then later we have to go back and get his car after we go do all the stuff we're doing. So we end up going back later to pick his car up. And so we're waiting to make sure he gets his car, he's good. And then we're gonna follow him to another spot where we're gonna go meet some other people. So the cops see us waiting and they pull up on us. And uh, my brother's with me is a fluent Spanish speaker. My Spanish is okay, but uh, not enough to be communicating with no police. So I'm sitting there, I'm just listening to the conversation and I'm hearing my, my brother talk to him and the cop is telling us that, uh, you know, what are we doing? What are we there for? What's our purpose? And then he tells, he tells us that, uh, you know, he stopped us because we look like criminals. And, and why should he, why should we, we, we shouldn't be offended because, you know, look at us, we have these tattoos, you know, we look the part, right? So they've completely profiled us, completely, 100% profiled us. Two dudes sitting in a car, tatted up, and, and my brother's sleeved up both sides, chest, back, everything, you know, he's all, all inked up. You know, I have my shirt on so you can not see my chest, my back, all that. But his, his brother's like completely tatted. So, you know, they're telling us because we had these tats, we're looking like criminals. And so that's why they're questioning us. And then they were just sitting there. They weren't leaving, they just sat there and, you know, talking this, you know, we look like criminals nonsense. And we're waiting for our brother. So finally, the brother gets his car. He pulls out. And we're like, oh, well, there's our guy. We're going. So we take off. They let us go. I'm sure they probably looked and see where we were heading. Just before that time, we got the word that they had captured uh, Rafa. Rafael Quintero, who, if you're a Narcos fan, you've seen his his portrayal in Narcos. You know, he was the guy who supposedly started the Cincinnati craze and uh, was working with uh, Miguel Angel Felix Gallardo. And, um, you know, back in the day, he did a stint in prison, was released in 2013 because his conviction was overturned. But ever since then, the U.S. has been looking to get him. And he's been kind of, you know, hiding out or laying low, whatever you want to say, until now. Now they finally caught him. But they had also caught another cartel leader uh, within the last couple of weeks. So Mexico right now, especially Baja, that area, is on high alert. So while we were there, we saw uh, police everywhere. The police presence was heavy. I mean, they were everywhere and they were traveling in packs. And uh, the National Guard was out rolling around and uh, in their, in their uh, big trucks. And then you also had um, the military out, you know, besides the National Guard. So all these different uh, law enforcement and military groups were out looking around, making sure you know, they were expecting something to pop off. Before we went, we were getting all these travel advisories. And if you look on the uh, State Department website, there's a travel advisory against going into Mexico right now. But we go into Mexico, there's always some issue on the State Department side warning not to go. But as long as you stay in your lane and you don't get out of pocket and think you're too American for the world, you don't usually have problems. So. We go all the time, it's not an issue. This is the first time I've been where I, you know, had the police like on me like that. And so we get away from that cop, follow our brother, go do what we gotta do. Then we go to uh, Rosarito 
and you know we go to <laughs> we're going to uh hang out and you know i get this extra special pat down it's like you know all up in between my legs dude's grabbing everything in my pockets and uh just like extra extra special and we've been there before so i i expect to get a little pat down because they don't want gunfights on the beach but this was like over the top i mean it was more than what it normally is so it was just a crazy little experience crazy little weekend down in mexico man i'm telling you guys go to mexico don't don't let this story deter you because it was a lot of americans down there man it was so many people down there that there was traffic everywhere they had roads shut down and the traffic was crazy crazy going going to ensenada so if you left out of tj trying to hit ensenada it was insane getting across the border into mexico it was insane and then when we were coming home trying to leave if you were leaving through san isidro the tj uh uh the tj uh crossing in onto the five that was crazy it was backed up all the way all the way back to uh man i forget the name of the street uh uh benito juarez i think is the name of the street all the way back all the way back down all the way back down you know and uh so we we saw that and like heck no Hit a hit a Yui on one of those uh, what do they call those roundabout things, and uh, went back the other way and ended up at Otai Mesa and got across there in an hour. But the other one, man, it looked like it was a four or five hour wait. I mean, it was insane. But that's what's going on down in Mexico. So if you're going anytime soon, just be aware of that. Going during the week may not be as bad, but if if you hit the weekends for the next few weeks it's probably going to be that way so just be aware of that when you're going on a motorcycle it's always easier because you can split lanes and go to the front you don't have to sit back and wait um, like you do in a car so i usually don't like to go in a car uh, but my brother's bike was uh, down so we drove in his car and went across but man it was quite a weekend but i had a lot of fun I had a lot of fun you know, got to meet some new people, see some craziness, <laughs> had a good time. It was a fun, fun weekend. Mexico is a great place to go hang out. I advise you guys to go, stop with the nonsense. I tell some of my other buddies, hey, you should roll. Some of them are afraid, they're afraid to cross the border. They're like, oh, they think something's gonna happen. You know, you're gonna get your head chopped off or some nonsense. You know, that reminds me, I think I told this story before, but I used to live in the avenues in Los Angeles. And at the time, Gangland had come out with a episode on the avenues, you know. Gangland made a whole lot of people super famous. And they came out with this, ad, this episode on the avenues and they were talking about how the avenues going around killing black people. And so uh, my wife, I was married at that time. My wife was like, oh, you got to be careful. I was like, I'm around this neighborhood all the time. If something's going to happen to me, it's not going to happen to me now because this, this stupid episode on a gangland came out. They would have hit me up a long time ago. So, you know, you just have to be aware that sometimes the media can hype things up people can hype stuff up and make you afraid to move and you just sit still in your in your cut you know sorry about that my battery just died i had to hook it up to the charger here to the volta so you know there's all this nonsense about what can happen to you and all that but if you listen to the media man they have you terrified of what's going to happen to you if you move you know left or right you got to be you know hanging out don't move don't don't act don't do anything but that's because they sell their product based on your fear so go to mexico don't get involved in people's business don't go down there and acting a fool don't go down there thinking you're gonna be mr badass or something like that just go down there and be a normal person have fun enjoy yourself be respectful stay in your lane and it'll all be good
So we had a great time, except for the police harassment. We didn't get any, we didn't have to pay any tickets, fines, and no one got arrested. It was just, you know, the police were vi very, very vigilant. And I'm assuming they probably thought we were, you know, there to, to cause some kind of problem or whatever. But no, that's not what we're about at all. We're anti-problems. <laughs> we just want to have fun, enjoy ourselves. So it was a good time despite those, those things. And... Uh, we look forward to going back down there soon. So like I said, get out, ride your bikes, go to Mexico. If you live in Southern California, Arizona, New Mexico, Texas, wherever you live. If you live close enough to ride over to Mexico, make that trip because you will have fun. Right? Don't sit back worrying about whatever the media is telling you. Just go and enjoy yourself. And like I said, be respectful. All right? This is a short video. Just wanted to lay out what I did this weekend and how things went down. It was a great time, had a fun time, and uh, hope you guys can have fun too. I got some more content coming out. Man, I did that 6,000 mile trip. I did back-to-back -back iron butts, and I have all this footage. <laughs> I'm going through it, I'm trying to put it together, and honestly, I've been a little bit lazy about it. So it's slowly coming out, but it'll be out, and hopefully, you know you guys will enjoy it and uh i got some other stuff coming out on the political tip and i don't mean biden political tip republican or democrat political tip i'm talking about in terms of bikers some stuff you need to be aware of and things you need to take action on and uh i'll be bringing that content to you soon so stay aw stay aware uh look forward to it and if you haven't already like share and subscribe help me build this uh this channel up and i can bring you more content all right talk to you later peace